Here we'll learn the bones of the pelvis. To begin, start a table and denote that the pelvic girdle, also referred to as the bony pelvis, comprises the following bones. The right and left pelvic bones, which are also referred to as the os coxa, the hip bones, and the anominate bones, which are formed by three bones that fuse during adolescence, the ilium, ischium, and pubis. These bones and their features will be the focus of this tutorial. The sacrum and cossacks form the posterior wall of the bony pelvis and are addressed with the vertebral column. The bones of the pelvis protect the lower abdominal and pelvic organs, articulate with the bones of the lower extremities, and provide attachment sites for muscles and ligaments of the trunk and lower extremity. Now let's show the pelvic girdle in articulation in anterior view. Begin with the fused sacrum and cossacks. Then outline the right and left pelvic bones. Label the obturator foramen, which is the space enclosed by circles of bone. Indicate the acetabulum, which is where the lower extremity articulates with the pelvis. Where the pelvic bones meet anteriorly show the pubic symphysis, which is a cartilaginous pad that is connected to the bones via ligaments. Identify superior, inferior, and medial lateral orientations in our diagram. Before we identify additional features in this diagram, let's look at the medial and lateral aspects of the pelvic bones. Indicate that we'll begin a medial view. This is the surface that faces the pelvic viscera and is also referred to as the internal or pelvic surface. Show anterior posterior orientation. Next, draw the three bones that fuse to form the pelvic bone the ilium superiorly, the pubis anteriorly, and the ischium posteriorly. Label the obturator foramen, which is the round space created by the ischium and pubis. Then indicate the features of the ilium. Begin with the iliac crest, which is the bony ridge of the ilium. Place your hands where your waist meets your hips to feel your iliac crest. Where the iliac crest terminates, label the anterior and posterior superior iliac spines. To feel one of these rounded projections, place your hands on the front of your hips to palpate your anterior superior iliac spine. Then show that the anterior and posterior inferior iliac spines are inferior to the superior spines. The iliac spines anchor muscles of the hip and thigh. Label the ala, which is the broad, flat portion of the ilium, below the iliac crest. The concave portion of the ala is the iliac fossa, which gives a bowl shape to this region of the pelvis. Posteriorly, show where the pelvic bone articulates with the sacrum via the auricular surface, which is the ear-shaped area, the oracle means ear, and the iliac tuberosity, which is the larger, roughened area. Indicate the arcuate line, which is a rounded ridge of bone that sweeps from the auricular surface to the pubis. On the pubis, show that the arcuate line continues as the pectineal line. These lines are collectively referred to as the linea terminalis. The pectineal line terminates anteriorly at the pubic tubercle, which is a knob-like projection that anchors the inguinal ligament, which is not shown. Below the pubic tubercle, show the symphyseal surface. This is where the cartilaginous pubic symphysis attaches to the pubic bone. Label the superior and inferior pubic rami, which are the straight portions of the bone. Notice that they connect with the ilium superiorly and the ischium inferiorly, and indicate that they form the anterior boundary of the obturator foramen. Posteriorly, label the features of the ischium, the ischial spine, tuberosity, and ramus, which joins with the inferior pubic ramus. Identify the two notches created by the projection of the ischial spine. Superiorly, the greater sciatic notch, which is also bound by the posterior inferior iliac spine. Inferiorly, the lesser sciatic notch. 
thick ligaments cross over these notches to create foramen, through which neurovascular structures enter and exit the pelvis. Next, let's draw the lateral surface of the right pelvic bone. This is the outer surface of the hip bone. Again, indicate anterior and posterior for our diagram. Notice that it's reversed from our illustration of the medial surface. Draw the ilium and ischium and pubis. Where the three bones meet, indicate the acetabulum, which is a deep cup-like depression where the head of the femur, also referred to as the thigh bone, articulates with the pelvic bone. In a laboratory or forensic setting, identification of the acetabulum can help you determine medial versus lateral aspects and right versus left pelvic bones. The acetabulum always points laterally, away from the pelvic organs. Otherwise, your lower extremity would attach to the inside of your pelvis. In our diagram, indicate the C-shaped lunate surface, which is smooth from articulation with the femoral head. For context, relabel the iliac spines, anterior superior and inferior iliac spines, and posterior superior and inferior iliac spines. Then show that the lateral surface of the ala, also called the gluteal surface, is marked by the posterior, anterior, and inferior gluteal lines. As their names suggest, these raised ridges indicate where the powerful gluteal muscles of the posterior hip attach. Relabel the greater and lesser sciatic notches and the ischial tuberosity, which is more visible in this view. On the pubis, indicate the pubic tubercle. Now let's return to our anterior diagram to label some key features. Indicate the ilium and label the iliac crest, iliac fossa, and anterior superior and inferior iliac spines. Show the ischium and label the ischial spines, which project inferomedially, and the ischial tuberosity. Inflammation of the ischial tuberosity and the muscles that attach to it, namely the hamstrings, causes pain in the buttocks, especially when sitting. Finally, label the pubis and indicate the pubic crest, which is the ridge of pubic bone that extends laterally from the pubic symphysis and is continuous with pectineal line. The pubic tubercle, which we identified in the medial and lateral views, and the pubic arch, which is the anterior arch formed by the union of the right and left pelvic bones. Before we conclude, let's learn some key terminology and landmarks of the pelvis. Indicate that the pelvic brim is formed by the superior edges of the sacrum, arcuate and pectineal lines, and pubic symphysis. It encloses the pelvic inlet. The pelvic inlet, also referred to as the aperture, is the circular opening between the abdominal and pelvic cavities. It divides the pelvis into false and true pelvises. Superiorly, the false or greater pelvis is bound by the ala of the ilium and the S1 vertebra. It contains the lower abdominal viscera. The inferior true pelvis, also referred to as the lesser pelvis, contains the pelvic viscera and deep perineum. Finally, denote that the pelvic outlet is the diamond-shaped opening enclosed by the pubic arch, the ischial tuberosities, the cossacks, and the sacrotuberous ligaments. This concludes our diagram.